Nick Walsh here at the International Market Square, part of the NHL Diversity Program's Dynamites Program, and we're joined by Willie O'Ree, who is the uh, quote-unquote Jackie Robinson of hockey, the first African-American or, or African-Canadian yeah. to ever play in the NHL. Willie, very thank you very much for coming on with us today. Well, it certainly is a pleasure. Um, it just dates back when I uh, when I first came to Minneapolis and uh, was involved with uh, John Foley's uh, Dynamite team. But, uh, it was really great uh, getting together with the kids and uh, now um, I'm here and I see some of them and they've, uh, they've grown over the years so uh, it certainly is a pleasure for me to be here and uh, I'm looking for an exciting evening. First half let's talk a little bit about your story. You came into the NHL in the late 1950s, the very first uh, uh, African uh, Canadian or African uh, ascent to play in the NHL. Talk about that experience first half. Well I was playing for the Quebec Aces a uh, team that was operating in the Quebec Professional Hockey League. They had uh, they had a, an affiliation with the Boston Bruins. So uh, when I joined the uh, the Quebec Aces in 1956, uh, played the year there, and then the next year I was invited to the Bruins training camp, and I went uh, and um, attended their training camp, and then I came back to uh, Quebec. And the second year, um, again, I attended the Bruins training camp, and I, I came back to Quebec. And then on January the 18th, 1958, the Bruins had a couple of injuries. Uh, they called the Quebec Aces and said, we want O'Ree to meet the Bruins in Montreal to play two games against the Montreal Canadiens. So uh, when I stepped on the ice on January the 18th, 1958, and became the first black player to play in the league. Um, it was uh, his, you know, a historical event. Uh, it really didn't dawn on me till uh, I was called back up on uh, with the Bruins on um, in 1961. But uh, we beat Canadians that night, uh, and we were, we were in fifth place in the league, and you know the, there were only six teams in the uh, the National Hockey League. They called it the original six, but um, it was a great feeling, and to know that uh, you know that I had uh, opened doors and broke down barriers for not only black players but players of color to get into the league, uh, you know, at the present time. It's been well documented about how Jackie Robinson, when he came into Major League Baseball, all the trials that he had to go through as far as being accepted by the fans and. and even at the time, not really sure if he ever was accepted completely until even after uh, he would left. Uh, what were your experiences as far as your interaction with the fans? How, how, what was the transition? Well, as far as playing in Canada, there was uh, there was no transition because I'm, there were only two teams in Canada, that Toronto and Montreal, and I was no stranger to those teams because I played junior against the uh, Montreal the Montreal uh, Royals or Montreal Junior Canadians, and in Toronto the Montreal Marlies and, and the uh, so when I came uh, when I came to the states it was uh, it was different there was the um, you know the racism and the prejudice and you know I just closed my ears to it I just said Willie just go and represent the hockey club to the best of your ability and don't worry about name name calling because names will never hurt you unless you let them and that's basically what I did but uh, there was the racism for not only players on the opposition but from fans in the stands even from your hometown in Boston. Oh no, I never, I never experienced any any problems in Boston. I uh, I lived in Roxbury, which was predominantly a black area. It was outside of uh, was outside of Boston, and uh, I would come in and practice and play in the gardens. But um, no, I can can't remember uh, one incident where I had racial remarks directed towards me in Boston. Great, great city, and uh, the players were all very supportive. Now that wasn't the only hurdle you had to overcome. The color of your skin, uh, you were also blind, and 95 percent one eye. How uh, how was that uh, a possible issue with you as you were coming up? Well, I um, it was my second year junior. I was playing in uh, Kitchener, Ontario, for a farm team of the Montreal Canadiens. And uh, during a game, the puck um, come up a slap shot, and I'm in front of the net, and the puck stri strikes me in the right eye. Uh, does a lot of damage. Um, I went to the um, I was in the hospital, and the doctor, Doctor Henderson, uh, came by my bedside and said, Mister Ree, he says the impact of the puck completely shattered the retina in your right eye and you're going to be blind and you'll never play hockey again. Well, I was um, 18 years of age and I kind of sunk back in my hospital bed and the, the goals and dreams that I had about playing professional hockey league, hockey was seemingly gone. So I got out of the hospital and being a left-handed shot and playing left wing to compensate, I had to turn my head all the way around to the right to pick the puck up with my left eye. And I found my, 
myself over skating the puck and missing the net and so I just uh, told myself I said Willie don't worry about what you can't see just concentrate on what you can see and I just uh, went out and played and uh, turned pro with the Quebec Aces and then even when I went up with the Bruins I, I played with one eye although they didn't know um, that I had um, uh, lost the sight in my right eye but uh, I was able to manage to play 21 years pro with one eye. When did you realize the significance of what you had done uh, being the first black hockey player in the NHL? I think when I was recalled back up in 1961 that the media said, oh, there's uh, there's Willie O'Reilly, he's a Jackie Robinson of hockey, broke the color barrier. But it, was, uh, uh, it wasn't up until then that the, uh, the significance was, you know, was, was made. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the diversity program that we have here. You uh, helped uh, form this, uh, I believe, 11 years ago, you said, and uh, you have been working all over the country trying to promote diversity in the NHL. Talk a little bit about what you're doing. Well, I'm, uh, I was appointed the, uh, the director of the diversity program for the National Hockey League on um, January the 18th, um, 1998. Commissioner Bettman appointed me, and uh, we, um, we had that, had, at that time had um, a few programs going and then uh, my duties were to travel around to these different programs and do on and off ice clinics, personal parents, autograph sessions, fundraisers and I speak at about 50 schools a year and I just try and encourage more boys and girls to get into hockey and uh, let them know that there is a, a sport that they can play where they never had the opportunity to play before and uh, it's been working out very well. We have 39 nonprofit programs going at the, at the present time and uh, I'm just having a, a wonderful time working with these boys and girls. Girl.